everybody. Let's get this party started. Not that it's going to be a party or anything, but hey, it's something to say. Anyway, here it is. Um, my geek is sending me net messages. He doesn't know I'm on live. So, uh, Liz, send Michael a message and tell him I am live on Facebook. So, somebody tell Michael I'm live. Anyway. Yeah, we just heard about the Supreme Court's, um, passing some law that states can can implement sales tax on, on in our fly shop. So what that means is our state's going to have to pass a law before we can collect sales tax from everybody in the United States. And we'll see how that goes. I don't know how it's going to work, but we, well, I'll get my... Uh, the, the lawyer that I sleep with every night to read the Supreme Court ruling and see how that goes. It looks like it's going to affect all of us from now on. But, hey, we'll see. Uh, I have some fun things to tell you. Yesterday, now, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I've got really good dogs. Really guard dogs. I mean, they are amazing dogs. We have Molly, who is the grand dog. She's visiting while the kids are on vacation. We have um, the new puppy, Tulip. She has been learning from the best. And we have Loki. Now, yesterday afternoon, it was about 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon, I heard Loki go nuts outside. The other two dogs were inside. Loki was on the back deck. And all of a sudden, Loki just started going bonkers. And you know what? I thought, oh no. Oh no. There is a raccoon on the porch and it's daylight. This is not good. So I got my butt up out of my chair. I was working. And I went to, I, I walked to the door slowly not so I wouldn't and every hair was standing up on Loki's back and I looked out and there was a bear in the tree right by the deck now it wasn't a huge bear it was a little bear it was a little bear it was probably a yearling bear and it was Oh my goodness, it's the first bear we've ever seen at our house. And we just were thanking God like crazy that we got to see a bear, but they're really starving right now. And so they're after any food they can get. Our neighbor told us last night that she's lost two feeders. And it was a little bear, and, and I didn't go outside. Robert did. <laughs> Robert scared it away. It went. It was on the other side of the fence, but the tree was right up by the deck, and I got a picture. So I'm so excited. I'll try to post it on our Facebook page later. Anyone. Anyway, I mean. So um, that was just tickled us to death because we've never seen a bear here, ever. And it was a baby bear. It wasn't a little baby bear, but it was... It was probably 125 pounds or more. It was as big as Loki. Loki's not 125 pounds, but he's bred to be a bear dog. He's a hound dog that we rescued. And he's it's instinct in him. We used to have another blue tick dog, blue tick hound dog named Lucy. And Lucy got her 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 side slashed by a bear claw. They have big claws. And then she got her a claw stuck through her gum and down underneath her chin one time. We've had a lot of vet bills from bears, but we've never seen one. We've seen markings on trees. They try to reach as high as they can to mark their territory. 
So we got to see this wonderful bear yesterday, uh, even if it was just for a split second. Robert and I both got to see it. And then we we um, were headed to dinner about 5.30, quarter till 6. Well, it was really about 20 till 6. And we were heading to dinner, and Robert, we're, we're right at this, on Wilson Road, which is right by the river, the French Broad River, and it floods a lot and everything, but he, he looks across this, <clears throat> we have a, a side farm there, and I think they've planted something else in the side farm this summer, but he looked across from the river flying, coming right across in front of us. He said, honey, there is a big bird coming our way. That's not really what he said. He put an ugly word in there. <laughs> a big bird. And I looked and I grew up with eagles. I grew up with eagles all over the place on Real Foot Lake. And I've seen as many as 30 or 40 in a tree in the wintertime with no leaves on it. You could really see them. And I looked at it. And we were probably still a little ways out from it. And I said, honey, it's got a white head. We're seeing a bald eagle. Can you imagine? We got to see a bear and a bald eagle all at one time within an hour of each other. So I felt like I was truly blessed that the hand of God had just come down and touched me. How wonderful. So, a bald eagle and a bear. It's the little things, you know. It's just the little things. And we had a beautiful, things are blooming around here. All the rhododendron are blooming. And they don't really smell, but the world smells so good. Hello from Dyersburg. That's my that's old stomping ground. Yep. Used to go to the grocery store in Dyersburg all the time. So, everybody... Look at the little things. It's the little things in life that keep us, you know, grounded. It is the little things. Well, sometimes they're just hungry. They're just hungry. And we got dog food on the back porch. And hopefully, red dragonflies. I've been watching two really dark blue ones on the front porch. Fly Lady Laura came by to give me a hug. She said I was a little bit emotional this morning. And I was, but hey, that's who I am. Hello from Memphis, yay! My son went to, and daughter-in-law went to school at the University of Memphis. Justin also went to school at Freed Hardman University, close to Jackson, Henderson, t Henderson Tennessee. Um, so everybody, look for the little things to be thankful for today. You know, it's those little things that help us to stop and smell the roses, to, to enjoy and take a picture. I mean, as I'm sitting right here now, I have a picture on my wall directly across from me of a red-tailed hawk that was on a, off our back deck in a tree. And Robert got this majestic picture of this hawk. And it makes me happy. I have a picture of a rose that I took from my garden and it was a, I've never seen it before, never ever seen it again. But it was a double rose. Curled, it was all curled up. I might just go take it off the wall and show you so you can see it. It's absolutely beautiful, this double rose. And uh, well, I might have a, yeah. okay, there it is. See that double rose? I took that picture. I took that picture. And I had it put on a mug for my sister and I. Because I think that reminds me of... It, it's just a, a beautiful picture of this twin center. And it, it makes me happy. And I took the picture. And it wasn't... It just took it with my phone. That's it. I don't think we have a bear right now because the dogs aren't barking and they would be barking inside and outside, you know? 
Now, guess what is in almost a little under two weeks? A little under two weeks is the 4th of July. So today's the first day of summer. We got to get our grill going. Got to clean that grill. Now, let me, let me warn you a little bit about grill cooking. If you're going to clean your grill, don't use a wire brush because people have had to go to the ER because one of those little wire bristles came loose. Build, a, build you a good big fire and take a straight edge spatula, heavy duty spatula, and you scrape those racks. Now, I like to, um, you can put some easy off cleaner on them and get them clean. But the main thing is you got to build a really hot fire, fire to clean that. I, we, we like to watch something on, on TV called Forged in Fire. It's one of my favorite shows ever. And they're making knives and blades and swords. And <laughs> it's so much fun. Because, I, you know, w one thing we got rid of when we started decluttering, before Fly Lady started, I wanted to be a blacksmith. We, had a, we bought a forge. We bought a 200-pound anvil. It was a lovely, lovely anvil. But I wanted to be a blacksmith. And I wanted to make yard art. Can you imagine that? Me making yard art. Now, fire cleanses. It really does cleanse stuff. So build a good hot fire and scrape down those racks, but don't use wire mesh. You, you can use a chain, chain mail like um, people would wear to clean, like you would use to clean the inside of a of an iron skillet, but don't use a wire bristled brush. They can be dangerous. Yep, hurricane season is upon us, even though we've already had one tropical storm and it rained here for 10 days. So folks, let's, let's build our control journal for emergencies. Uh, we've had an inch and a half of rain this week. So Robert did some, um, got rid of some boxes today for me. Now, you got to put together your emergency control journal in case you need to evacuate. You need to know where everything is so you can grab it and go. And it, it just makes it so much easier on you when you when you have this control journal put together. And if you have to be if you have to shelter in place for flooding like we had to do a few weeks ago, when you, if you have to shelter in place, having food to be able to do that, it might not be low carb for me, but hey, we could survive. A bug out bag ready, that's great. Because when you need to evacuate, and nowadays, we get plenty of warning. We get plenty of warning when there's a storm coming. So let's get back to the 4th of July. I've got on my... 4th of July shirt. It's got fireworks and the flag. Are you going to have a party on the 4th of July? If so, do you have an emergency control journal for us? Yes, I have. Um, you can see um, what you have to put in the emergency control journal. is is called the preparedness list. Liz can put up uh, that list. It's part of it. It's one of the steps in building your control journals. Where are you living? I am in Brevard, North Carolina. And guess what, y'all? I got to see four pages in layout of the new book last night. I'm so happy. It's going to be beautiful. I can't wait for you to see it. Uh, next thing. Oh, of planning a party. So, when you're when you have people coming to your house, what do they what do they want? Do they want burgers or do they want barbecue? Do they want steaks? You know, what do your fa what's your family like to cook? So, 
Let's start making our groceries. Now let's, let's set our timer for two minutes. Two minutes. If you're going to have a barbecue at your house and you just have a regular old barbecue grill, not a gas grill. I don't have a regular old barbecue. I don't have a gas grill. I have a, just a plain barbecue grill. But you have to have, char I have to have charcoal. And I don't need lighter because I have this chimney thing that phew, newspapers does it. Uh, oh, we used to do barbecue chicken. Oh my, I remember barbecue chicken. We would get the chickens cut in half and we would cook a bunch of them. We'd have big parties and cut them halfway across, right down the breastbone so that they laid flat and you soak them in in olive oil or some kind of oil and and um, salt and pepper and paprika and I like a little cayenne on them and and just put them on top of the on the grill off to the side and put the lid down not on open fire with the bone side down and let them cook for about an hour then you can turn them over I like to cook my chicken really done 45 minutes on a side is what I like to cook this chicken. It's like roasting a chicken. And then you can make up some barbecue sauce and put that on there. The last thing. Oh, Italian dressing marinade is, is to die for. And to make a marinade, you need an oil. You need an acid source. So some kind of vinegar, oil and vinegar mix with some spices in it. And Italian dressing is just great. Then um, another thing I like to do is sometimes on the 4th of July, you've got corn coming in and you can probably get it at the grocery store, but make, I like to get, see, got sidetracked, talking about corn on the cob. Is there anything better than roasted corn? You can leave it in the shuck. I like to, I don't like the messy shucks when I'm, when I'm eating it. So I put it in aluminum foil. I get it out of the shuck and put it in aluminum foil. Put some butter in it. Sprinkle it with salt and pepper and a little cayenne because I like it spicy. I like it really spicy. And you seal the top like you're sealing up a turkey, but seal the top. Fold it over and pinch it real good. And then roll it down and then fold the ends. You want to keep all that moisture inside. And I would turn it every five minutes on the grill and cook it for about 45 minutes. I know that seems like a whole lot, but I like my corn where it's done. And then hamburgers. I did some new type of hamburgers the other day. We go to a place called Juicy Lucy's over in Asheville and it, they have the best hamburgers ever. Mm, mm, mm. They are really good. So they have this Juicy Lucy burger that has cheese in the middle. So I cut a, I made two little hamburger, two thin hamburger patties, cut a hunk of pepper jack cheese, just a square of pepper jack cheese, Put it in the middle of the burger and sealed up the burger all the way around. Oh my. Justin said, Mom, how did you do that? And I said, I just made two burgers and mashed them together. Country style ribs are wonderful. Now, a good way to do ribs is to put your favorite rub on them and put them in aluminum foil just like you do the corn. And put that on the grill and let it sort of steam in its own juices. And then just before you want to serve them, you take them out of that and put them over the open fire and then put barbecue sauce on them if you want barbecue. Let's see. Oh, that was what Mary's talking about is called a hobo dinner where I grew up. And you slice potatoes and onions and you have hamburger and peppers and oh, and just put it in foil. I've done it with pork chops too. And it is to die for. It's wonderful. One of my favorite things to do for a party is a, is a low country boil. And you get five pounds of shrimp or two pounds or three pounds. I, I try to get a pound per person. 
And, and I, I like the medium shrimp, which is about 40 to 45 per pound. Not that a whole person, but I like leftovers. <laughs> I plan for leftovers. And you get corn on the cob and you get uh, little new potatoes. And what else goes in there? New potatoes and lots of lemons. I like to squeeze lemon juice in, in the water. New potatoes and corn and kielbasa sausage. And I cut it into hunks and I get some Zatarans seasoning that's liquid. Now this stuff is hot fire and I have a big pot that I cook it in and then don't cook it in the house. You got to use your turkey cooker outside, your turkey fryer, and you put water in it. And what I like to do is put the water in the, in with the lemons and I, I put the corn in there and I put the, put the potatoes in there and I kind of let it sit in this hot water for a while. And then I turn it on to boil and I'll cook the corn and potatoes and take them out. And then I will add the kielbasa to it because it's got to cook a little bit and you're really just heating it up. And then take the shrimp and put in there and you only have to cook the shrimp till they turn pink and you just throw the... I keep a roll of brown paper handy and just throw that over the table and pour it out on the table. And that is, is one of my favorite ways to, to have a big celebration is a low country boil. And it is yummy. Punch is a little but, bit sweet for me these days. But I used to make a good punch with um, orange juice and lemonade pineapple juice. We called it a uh, wedding punch and ginger ale. And you can throw some, a can of uh, mar maraschino cherries in it and it gets kind of festive. <clears throat> a fun thing to do is to take a Cool Whip bowl, throw some of these cherries in it and some ginger ale and freeze it. So it, it's, it's a fun punch to have. And it's kind of like having, um, you can put some grape juice in it if you want to, if you want to make a sangria type thing. Yum, yum, yum. So think about what you're going to do for a party and start getting that stuff in the house. That way it won't be that big a deal because 4th of July is on a Wednesday. Marge, you're going to be settle, celebrating on, um, on Sunday, Canada Day. So 4th of July is on a Wednesday for us. So we could have parties. We could have parties all week. Just start one weekend, do Wednesday, and then go to the next weekend. It could be a fun time. The re I don't have a recipe for punch. Uh, but I know, I remember it had pineapple juice in it. And it had a can of orange juice in it. And it had um, ginger ale in it and I just mix it up I just start throwing things together sometimes I have even put in raspberry jam I melt it in the microwave and mix that in so it's kind of a raspberry punch brown bunch butcher paper yep I keep a roll I wrap all my presents in brown butcher brown paper Yep, there are some fun ways to have a party. Do you use ice inside your punch? Well, what I like to do is I like to go to the fish camp. They have the best ice in town. It's kind of like sonic ice. It's little fluffy ice. And um, it is wonderful for lemonade and that sort of thing. And you put that in a glass and then add the juice to it and it kind of melts all together and it doesn't dilute it too much. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I like to have, uh, yeah, we like to, we like the fish camp. We went there last night, but there's too many people there. So we had to go across the street, across the parking lot, that is. Anyway, so 
Start planning your 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 Fourth of July celebration, and get some stuff in the house so that you can have some more fun. Graham crackers, marshmallows, um, Hershey bars. Get some sticks. You can buy the sticks on Amazon to roast the marshmallows. You can have a fun time. If Get the kids to pick up limbs and stuff in the yard to get your fire pit ready to go where you can have can roast these marshmallows and stuff. That's some good recipe right there. That, is, that looks real good. But you got to have orange juice and lemonade and you can just mix it up. You can't go wrong. You just keep tasting it till you like it. That We can't be afraid to try things. You know what I mean? You can't be afraid. Liz has lots of marshmallows. Ask her. <laughs> I sent her marshmallows for uh, for for Matt's graduation party. They got enough marshmallows to last all summer long. So I'm not doing potatoes these days. Fourth of July is party time though. I may have some good food on the Fourth of July. Do you hear me? It's party. I'm not going to give up the party. Now I also like to make baked beans and potato salad. It's real easy. The yeah, the it's really some sugary drink that punch is. That's for certain. <laughs> yes, she does. So, um, just start thinking about it. We got two weeks. When you go to the grocery store this week, you can get some of the things you need that can be bought ahead of time and put them in the refrigerator and the freezer. Uh, you know, a lot of people like frozen burgers. That's fine, but you got to get them in the house. I like, um, if I'm going to have a burger, I want a lot of dill pickles on that burger. A lot of dill pickles. My, as I can taste it right now, the dill pickles. And good onion, cauliflower, mashed potatoes. You know, you could probably make cauliflower potato salad. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Just steam some cauliflower, cut it up into pieces, and add um, some onion, a little bit of onion, a little bit of mayonnaise, an, a couple of eggs, according to how, two or three eggs, according. And wow. You could have fake potato salad. Doesn't that sound yummy? I love macaroni salad. Macaroni is my downfall. Plain pasta is my downfall. But I'm trying not to have it around me. Oh my. Now my stepfather used to make barbecued bologna. I got a funny story to tell you. He would take a big hunk of bologna. I mean, this this big. Uh, and and our across the street neighbor used to make this too. They would sort of have a battle of the grills. And this big big hunk of bologna and he put it on the grill and cook it. And then he put barbecue sauce. And it was barbecued bologna. Well, Robert and I were traveling to Utah one time. And we were taking I-40 as far out as we could go. And we were in Arizona. I mean, in the middle of nowhere. And we looked up. And what we could see ahead of us was a huge sandstorm a huge and the the road was closed i-40 was closed we had to get off well we were starving at this point and there was this barbecue place and we pulled into this barbecue place and thought we'd go in and sort of wait out the sandstorm which we didn't but we, we went in to eat, and I looked at the menu, and on the menu, it had barbecue bologna. I thought I was going to die. And I said, I'm from Tennessee, 
and <clears throat> I've never seen this on a menu. My, my stepfather used to cook this stuff all the time. It was a delicacy in our house. And he said, well, I'm from this little town in West Tennessee and we just couldn't believe it. Papa used to get parts in this little town for his tractors and it was amazing, amazing that here this man had moved out to Arizona and he was making bologna, barbecue bologna. You can have a barbecue with just about anything if you want to cook. I've cooked Boston butts. Now, Boston butts are going to be on sale. Boston butts are going to be on sale in the next um, few weeks because people want to barbecue them. And you can put one in the freezer so you can have it later. So folks, start thinking about what you're going to cook. Now, right now, let's talk about where we are next week. You know, it's real easy to have a party when your house is clean. It's real easy to open your door up to the neighbor. We had a neighbor come to the door at 8.30 last night delivering her um, her, her maintenance check to Robert because Robert handles all that. And... You're not, when you have a clean house, it's easy to have a party. You have to run your mop real quick before people come over. And you can cook starting ahead of time. You know, think about the dessert you're going to have. Are you going to make homemade ice cream? Oh, this is a summer without ice cream for me. So I'm not going to eat any ice cream this summer. Oh my, I remember those churches selling bar barbecued bologna. It's a wonderful thing. Y'all have got some great ideas here. So if you're going to have burgers, you need hamburger meat. and You need to make up the burgers ahead of time. Making them up ahead of time keeps them from getting too dry. And I like not super lean hamburger meat for hamburgers. Oh, peach cobbler's good. And if you're building a, a fire pit, that's a good thing to do is to put it in in a, um, a Dutch oven in your fire pit. And you can you do some peaches with some sugar on them and put um, dump a, a white cake mix in it. That's it. That's what my grandson taught me it's really good but it's real easy to make cobbler too i mean you you take one part flour and a half a part sugar and a self-rising flour you got to use self-rising flour take some of the juice from the peaches and pour in it if you've canned peaches or just um just some milk and i like to put some nutmeg in it and wow in a dutch oven Put it in, and you can get these liners for your Dutch oven, too. And it kid, it'll, kids will have a ball with it. You can probably find a YouTube video on how to make a uh, Boy Scout peach cobbler. And, you know, kids will eat it. If they've cooked it, they will eat it. I promise you. So have fun getting ready for the... You know, get the planning is half the battle. It's starting to rain again, and I got a dog outside. Well, folks, next week we're in our living room. That is the main room of our house, and we're going to get it clean and ready to go. And I'm going to have to get off here because I got a dog outside getting wet. The little dog is outside. Um, uh, we um, have been working on the morning musings for next week. So we're going to get our living rooms clean. That way, when the end of the month rolls around, you're good to go. Your living room's clean. Everything. <laughs> Everybody, start your grocery list for the party. Let's party. 
Let's have some more parties. Let's get, you know, invite people over. It's, it's going to be fun when you can open your doors up or if maybe have a potluck. If you don't want to make everything yourself, then have a potluck. Have a potluck. Everybody bring something. Tell them it's bring your favorite thing for a barbecue. Everybody bring something. That makes it easy and you provide the drinks and the meats. Yum. Now, I've been drinking my water today. Boy, have I. It's a wonderful day to drink. I've had more energy since I've been drinking my water than I ever thought. Excuse me. I don't have to I don't have to take a little nap in the afternoon because I've been drinking my water. And I don't really take a nap. I just kind of lay my head down on a pillow and prop my feet up and I'll probably fall asleep for all of five minutes and then I'm good to go. So folks, drink your water. We're 21 days into our body clutter journey and I'm seeing great results. I don't know about you, but I have not cheated I have planned, I have a little square after we get home from, from dinner, I usually have a little square of chocolate. I think I've already had about 80 ounces of water today. I'm I'm not the energizer bunny. I just have lots of energy. It's probably because I'm ADD. (laughs) So folks, let's plan a party. Let's get some fun going on. We need more more laughter in our lives. I I love reading uh reading your comments here. Yep, Elvis loved banana and peanut butter sandwiches. So folks, I love you all. I got to go let my dog in. Everybody have a good day and start planning those parties. We can do this. Sorry it's a short one, but it's just, I it's pouring down out there and I got to go get, can you hear it? So start your grocery list and get it in the house and then it won't, it won't be bad. You can make the desserts on Monday and Tuesday. You can put the hamburgers together and freeze them. Wednesday and Wednesday, all you got to do is cook. I love you all. I'll see you next week or tomorrow morning. Bye.